and we click it on. Hello, 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 YouTube. There's I, Paul of the Murphy. Still tempting to get you to, still trying to tempt you into buying a copy of my book. Paul Murphy's extremely unlikely history of the world. Book two. And tonight I'm going to read some of the Poland section. Oh, I've got some glasses. You can't move here for batteries and cables. It's like a spinster's hat. <laughs> you sure do eat a lot of bananas, Mrs. Stimps. Oh, no, it's good for the potassium. Where did I get to? Oh, that would be a widow, really, wouldn't it? Not a spinster. Anyway, so Poland. Poland's. <coughs> I'm not going to cough in the key of G sharp. <coughs> My coughing's very flat these days. I'll never get in the cough chorus. Poland Stone Age began. Actually, one thing I've noticed when I review these uh, videos back, what uh, YouTube's automatic subtitler does with some of the things I say, it's just like, <laughs> I mean, it comes up. Even, you think my books are surreal, but what they put on the bottom that I'm saying is just even worse. So I don't know whether to read it really fast just to screw them up. So, Poland, my life, I'm going to be on the when they do this, read something, I'm going to be here. I'd love to see what uh, <laughs> YouTube's automatic translator did with that. Let's get on with this, shall we? So, Poland's Stone Age began approximately 500,000 years BC and saw the appearance of three distinct Homo species Homo erectus, Homo neanderthalensis, and Homo sapiens, brackets, humans. I know you know that, but it all adds up to the word count. <laughs> approximately 499,999 years, 11 months and 29 days BC, a group of inhabitants of Britain started a Strexit campaign to stop them coming in and using our NHS, Neanderthal Health Service. I can't remember what I was thinking of when I wrote that. I guess Strexit, I was thinking Stone Age exit. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, I'm not racist, said Mrs. Elsie Racist. <laughs> But there's a long waiting list for operations. Mars Sydney was impaled by a woolly mammoth tusk, and he's been waiting 18 months to have it removed. And so is the mammoth. <laughs> Very difficult for him it's been having to go around stuck to the tusk of a woolly mammoth. You can't imagine what it's like trying to get a seat on the tube. And he's always last to get lunch at work. We've had to have the lavvy repaired 186 farms this year alone, and he's played merry hell with our marital workings. Ever since that night I got a bit tipsy and climbed on the wrong one, so it's gone right off me. Look, I said, this should bring us closer together. Now I know what it's like to be impaled on a woolly mammoth as well. It should, he replied, but only one of us went back for seconds. And it's not only the NHS that's under strain from all these people coming over here. There's a housing shortage. Three years it took us to get our council cave. <laughs> they come over and get one in weeks. Just because they built it themselves doesn't mean they should queue jump. My Sydney built our own first cave, actually. Only took him two years. Lovely it was. Not that we ever saw the inside because he forgot to build the entrance. And all the benefits that they take coming over here. Can my Sydney get disability living allowance? No, he can't. Went to the assessment he did. Why don't you think you can work, Mr. Racist? <laughs> this bureaucrat asked him. Hmm, let's see. I've got bad lumbago, and oh yes, I'm stuck on a fucking woolly mammoth, he replied in his posh voice. And have you been, have you declared this mammoth as a codependent? No, he's independent. He has his own job. And do you go to work with him? Well, I don't have much choice since I've been impaled on him. So, in fact, Mr. Racist, you have two jobs. That doesn't seem very disabled to me. Not very disabled? Have you ever tried being an aerobics instructor and trying to show people how to do jumping jacks with a tusk of a woolly mammoth lodged between your vertebrae? No, Mr. Racist, I haven't. But then, I've got a really great job getting paid more than it would cost to give you benefits to say you can't have any benefits. And off he fucked him. <laughs> yeah, these overseas lot come over here and I bet if they get impaled by a woolly mammoth, they get some sick money. I bet some of them even smuggle their own mammoths in <laughs> their hand luggage just so they can claim of impalement lawyers for you. Sooner we get control of our borders the better. Then we can invade people and exploit them. Like a good democracy. <laughs> <laughs> Look how I, quit it. I wish I'd done it in my crone voice, actually. Nah, I'm not racist, said Mrs. Elsie Racist, but there's a long waiting list for operations. I might re-record it later on in my crone voice. Anyway, that'll do for now.